Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about directory tree, understanding the file system structure in Linux. But before we get into it, I just wanted to quickly show you a little trick so that each time you come into your Ubuntu desktop, you don't keep searching for the terminal. So what you would do is clear the screen and you will go to the terminal on the left, right click that and add to favorite. Okay. And what that means for us is if I close that, you can always have it here rather than always go into search for it and clicking on that. Now back to directory tree in Linux. For the, most of us, we have spent a lot of years using Windows and we understand that in Windows there is a C drive or D drive or E drive and you can click on folders and get into the folder and create files, create folders and do things like that. In the world of Linux, we don't click on things. We work on the terminal and folders are used as directories in Linux. So they use internet. But on Linux, how exactly does it structure its uh, folder? It uses what we call the parent child model. And what do I mean by that? Let's create a couple of folders. We're used to the word, uh, the command MKD dir right so mkdir and i'll say first folder and if i do ls i can see the first folder right there what if i want to create nested folders remember we talked about nested folders in previous videos what i mean by that is when you have folders within folders just use tab completion right if i wanted to create a second underscore folder and also create third folder second third let's say we have one more fourth folder I'm gonna mini maximize my terminal now if I did a uh, enter on this it's gonna fail because mkdr cannot create directory all of that no such file or directory exists but basically this exists we do know this exists but this and that and that do not exist now there's a command we can use that can do that for us in one go and if i put a flag remember flags minus p that would do it for us so remember that actually let me take a note down in our notes there we go so we have flags and by the way i didn't save the file previously so i've lost some of the data but i'm sure you have yours so mkdir minus p okay so save that somewhere okay so we have that and it's been able to create all the folders for us so if i do first tab second tab third tab and hit enter you can see the fourth folder shows now i'm going to use a tool called tree and you may not have tree installed already i have installed it on my linux computer here to install softwares we use a tool called apt right you can do apt get install tree now you may not be able to do it right away like that because remember this dollar sign here signifies that I am a regular user now we're gonna go into details of how users and permissions work in Linux so I'm not gonna go into the detail right now but for the sake of installing a software we need to use a command called sudo and sudo basically gives me a privileged uh, permission to do things that systems administrators would do so if you type in sudo app get install tree and I'll put my password and there we go I've got tree installed I actually thought I'd installed it previously but anyways now it's installed I can clear my screen and if I do tree first folder as you can see shows me the levels of my directory so this is what we call the directory tree in Linux so the last one here is a child to the fourth folder the third folder is a child to second folder the second folder is a child to first folder now there's something we'll call the root folder the root folder is the one that has no parent okay so second folder is a parent to third third is a parent to fourth but first doesn't have a parent and so it's the root folder so this same concept applies to uh, the Linux file system which I'm gonna be talking about uh, right now okay so let's remove these folders and that was just created to 
to explain a concept ahead of time all right now let's do something if I do ls on forward slash it's gonna bring back a couple of uh, directories and the file swap file but you can ignore the files we're gonna focus on the folders since we're talking about the directory tree so and if you notice I'm using the word folder and directory interchangeably that's because they mean the same thing now the root folder remember I talked about the root which is the parent that has no parent is signified by or represented by forward slash in Linux so that's the root folder forward slash and it has ch children which is bin dev lib and all that now each of these you have their own child as well and tree is going to help us to have a look at what what it looks like you know the whole directory tree structure looks like so if I do a tree on uh, the root folder and I use a flag minus capital L which signifies for level because if I don't do that it's actually going to go into all the uh, deep subdirectories and list everything so minus L and I'll tell it what level I want which is number one if I do hint enter let me expand the terminal I'm gonna clear the screen and run the command again with my upper arrow as you can see the root directory here has bin boot cd-rom dev etc home and all the way down what if I did uh, level 2 clear the screen as you can see I'm gonna scroll we have some of them have even subfolders inside so this is what the directory tree looks like in Linux now so many of them so I'm just gonna clear the screen and let's go back to level 1 what I want to do is just talk about each of them and kind of give you an idea of what the use for what the purpose is so that when you start doing some real DevOps work or systems administrator kind of work you understand exactly what you're doing and also you will be able to know where you should go to where you shouldn't go to and what files or configuration you should you know play around with and why you shouldn't touch some file now let's start with the first directory which is the bin now something is going to um, be very interesting to you here you can see there is bin and there's an arrow that's pointing to another uh, directory usr bin and usr is somewhere down here usr you can see that and we're going to come to come to that very soon but what i want you to notice is bin is actually linked to usr bin so what it means is they're essentially the same thing right so bin usr bin they're linked to together call it soft link or symbolic link so but we'll get into all of that later on but what i want you to understand at this point is in the bin folder it contains binaries and that's why it's called bin right now remember we used the which command previously if i did which ls you know we've been using ls command for a while now and it shows us that the ls command is stored in the bin of usr so remember root usr which is a child to root bin which is a child to usr and ls which is the binary file itself so basically bin stores binary files and it's linked to usr bin and if we do which ls it tells us that ls is a binary file that is stored in the usr bin folder okay now what do we mean by binary files binary files are uh, first of all you can't read them like text and we're gonna demonstrate that right now actually let's do that so I'm gonna clear my screen and let's do which ls again let's copy this file and I'm gonna do a cat I'm sure you remember the cat command as you can see it contains some gibberish right? in software development software engineering all the programs are text but before they can be used to run as a program they have to be compiled so the compiled version of the program or the code that's been written is basically a, a binary file so uh, let's do which ls again and remember ls does something which is to list directories for us and files okay so the 
the fact that LS is able to do this for us shows that it's a program that has been designed to do a specific task and that program is a binary which is stored in this folder okay so uh, let's go back to the tree command tree on root minus L and the first level so bin is a binary folder it's a folder that stores our binaries period now you might wonder what other binary files are in the bean directory well let's have a look at some of the commands that we've been using for some time now so which cat where is that stored as you can tell usr bean cat and don't forget don't forget usr bean is just as bean just to remind you let me go back to the tree command and by the way this is a shortcut to bring back the previous command that we've been using so I did a control R and if you do control R and just type the first few letters of the command it's gonna bring the whole command and rather than typing everything from the beginning you can just you know it brings it up and then you can just hit enter so we're talking about bin okay so if we see USR bin don't be confused bin is linked to USR bin alright because if you do ls on bin whatever it brings is going to be the same as what we would get if we did on USR bin as you can see you see so USR bin it brings back the same thing so they're linked together so don't get confused with that alright so which cat USR bin which CP we've done CP to copy it's in there how about move it's in there how about uh, PWD so all the binary files are stored in USR bin and we if we did an LS on USR bin USR bin which is as good as doing on bin you can see there are a few other commands that we haven't even started making use of so if you want to try out a few commands apart from the ones that I'm showing you in these videos, you can actually go into the bin folder or USR bin folder and you know start experimenting with them. So all the binaries are stored in this folder and that's all you should know about that. So thank you very much. I hope this uh, has been very informative for you and I'll see you in the next video.